No. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so, J. Cole. Say, after I did all this backing up telling you how J. Cole gonna whoop Kendrick ass, I'm gonna tell y'all why what J. Cole did was the smartest play in the game. And no, he's not a punk for the move he made. So first and foremost, welcome to The Den Show. My name is Ed Honcho. I'm your host. And as always, it is an honor, my privilege, and my pleasure to get to chop it up with you, have these conversations with you each and every time we get together. Um, so recently, if you are a fan of the rap music, uh, Kendrick Lamar, K-Dot, if you will, uh, released a diss track, you know, when they dropped that uh, that toxic masculinity, that, that toxic future. Uh, shout out some slugs at Drake and J. Cole. If you know me, you know I don't give a fuck about Drake. To give two shits. If you also know me, you know that I think Kendrick Lamar is overrated. I'm not saying he's not intelligent, but he just makes modern Negro spirituals with a weird ass voice. Other than that, is he poetic? Yeah. Is his music really jamming like that? Eh, not so much. Let's, let's be honest. J. Cole didn't lie. But let's get to the point of what took place. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you see the apology and I'm going to tell you why J. Cole made a power move that a lot of people aren't contemplating. They say, no, he bowed out, he's scared. J. Cole is absolutely not scared. We're going to break down what he said. I'm going to let it play, and then we're going to kind of run it back, and I'm going to tell you why J. Cole is the genius that he is and is a better artist than Kendrick Lamar. So let's go ahead and just check it out, and then I'll let you play it all the way through, and I'll break it down and kind of give you my thoughts on it. Moving incorrectly, and I pray that God aligned me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot, I'ma take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Cause I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Past two days felt terrible. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. So all of that to say, man, I want to I wanna now perform the song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called Love Yours. I'm for y'all right now. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. No such thing, no such thing. So let's kind of run it real quick. Let's just kind of break down what he was saying here for those who didn't catch it. So first and foremost, you know, what I've come to realize about this is really crazy um, because this is not really telling of J. Cole nor Kendrick because those are the only two lyricists in this conversation. Uh, we're not talking about the OVO sweatshop. But when it comes down to what J. Cole did, I think he's pulled a move more powerful than most rappers you, you know, right? Because rap is a game of ego and pride, and I think... You know, he got bit by that. And he said that those last two days he felt terrible, that he was not in line with himself. And if you, I don't know J. Cole personally, but if you know J. Cole, like I don't know J. Cole, I don't really follow celebrities like this. But something that I've heard about him is that he's not around negative energy. It was, pardon me, I sneezed. But it was a chick, I can't remember who it was, was talking about how he came in the studio and it was him, her and some other girl and they were talking, kind of talking shit about somebody. And he said he sat there, didn't say anything. Maybe 30 seconds to him and just got up and left. Right? Because he's not around that energy. But what this tells me is the way I see the fans reacting, most fans reacting, lets me know a couple of things, right? That one, y'all obviously don't have enough drama in your life that we as, as certain types of people, we just love drama, especially when it involves other people and not ourselves, we love to put people in drama. This man came out and said that it was disturbing his soul, right? And it was an issue. Let's kind of run it back and see what he's saying moving incorrectly and I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my so the first thing he said was that he was moving incorrectly what this tells me is all the people who want him to be bro he doing this he doing that y'all don't have a purpose y'all have no purpose in life most people don't have a purpose most people don't know what their purpose is most people especially people who are really into uh you know celebrity worship and things like that really have no purpose they follow other people's purpose and try to you know emulate them right so a lot of these people have no purpose and so what you want is someone to go out and do what you're too afraid to do right so you want this man to crash out and live uncomfortably with himself if you listen to seven minute drill i don't even think that was a uh that seemed to be like a half-hearted effort in my opinion to do something because he felt like he was pressured right 
um, a lot of us want to see that rap beat. This is bringing back hip hop. Why is hip hop so toxic? Like, why does it why does it have to be beef? And I'm not saying that I don't enjoy it, that I haven't enjoyed some of the 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 great beefs of our time, the Nasas and the Biggies and the 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 Jays and 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 the Fifties and Ja Rules and uh, I don't mix them all up, but y'all know what I'm saying. It was Nas and Jay Z and Biggie and Pac and and Ja Rule and Fifty and you know things like that all down the line. I'm pretty sure I missed some of y'all. Might say, well, Eminem and Benzino was a great historic beef. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but when you are a purpose, who a, per- a person who is in line with your purpose, and you know, hey, and if it's if you are a, a demon, you're on demon time. You want to cause chaos. But if you are trying to find peace, you're trying to be a certain type of individual, which most people aren't, because most people don't understand the discipline it takes to do that. Um, they want you to crash out. They want you to do something that's against your nature. So most of you would be more content with this man being uncomfortable with himself to please you because you want to see some drama. But anyway, you pray somebody praying back to God to align him with his purpose. Let's carry on. My path, you know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm going to take that shit on the chin, boy. Dude. Now, I'm not saying this was a sneak diss. I'm not saying it was. I think he's just talking. You know what I'm saying? If you really felt emotional about it, it's supposed to be the game, right? It's supposed to be a, 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 a contest of who's the best. Right? And even in the first thing, I think that generated all this shit. You know, who's the best? K-Dot, Aubrey, or me? You see J. Cole coming from an angle showing love. But I guess, you know, the little guy. The little five foot five guy took it personally and, um, you know, wanted some type of smoke. Cool. Whatever. So he said, you know, take your best shot. I'm going to take it on the chin. So basically, what do you what do you tell somebody? Who, what kind of person do you tell to take their best shot? Do you tell somebody that you are truly in fear of, that you're truly concerned about, that you're truly worried about doing serious damage to you to take your best shot? I'm going to take it on the chin. No, that's something you tell. That's something you see a motherfucker tell a a, a person who they have no concern about dropping them, knocking them out. Ain't no punching power. Take your best shot. You see a boxer. Come on, right here. You know what I'm saying? Give me all you got. They they don't respect your power, right? And I'm not saying that he doesn't respect Kendrick's capabilities in that sense. But when you have a higher purpose, when you have a higher power, when you are destined for something greater, they're getting into the trivial shit that we love to see. We love the drama. I mean, we just, we do. We love it. Niggas love drama. Um, but when your purpose is higher than that, you, you know, you're not worried about it. What's the, what's the saying? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm not saying he's a religious, not saying that's the case. Just saying when you, when you're destined for something higher, you're not worried about anything else. What you do, you know what I mean? Like all good, like it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Cause I ain't gonna lie to y'all past two days felt terrible. Like. Call it a misstep. Misstep. What do you do when you misstep when you're not when you don't follow your plans? You're not moving according to how you intend to. You stumble. You know, he considered it a stumble. He didn't look at it as prideful. He didn't look at it as uh something to do. Again, you have all these heads all around you, you have the internet talking, you have all these people in the curve. Well, he said something about you. You gotta say something back. Why why do you have to say something back? Maybe I just don't want to engage in it. Doesn't make you pussy. Right? Because the man you have to be afraid of is the man that you know has the capabilities, but chooses not to use those capabilities. Right? But some of us don't comprehend that. Some of us just want drama, uh, danger at every turn, every corner, and something. They want, we want beef. We want something to, to, to complain about, argue about. Because again, I guess obviously we don't have enough drama and problems in our own lives. But again, I have nothing but respect for J. Cole issuing this apology because I think it's, it's much deeper than people want to see. But let's finish hearing what he says. And then I'm gonna tell you what I really think about this whole thing. It let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. So all of that to say, man, I wanna, I wanna now perform the song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called Love Yours. I'm for y'all right now. So again, no such thing as a life that's better than yours. Great song. So what I think happened here is a lot of people expected J. Cole, knowing that you know the type of music that J. Cole makes, you can pick an aggressive verse here or there, but we know the type of music that J. Cole makes. And you're wanting him to get into it with the Negro spiritual rapper, right? The little guy with the weird voices. 
And again, the third party guy to me has no role in this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all may be fans. I'm not. It's my personal opinion. I really care less. But again, when a man has a purpose, and it's, and it's really rare to see in a celebrity, because we know celebrities, especially all those who went to the Diddy parties, um, when you lack a level of integrity, when you lack a standard that you set, you know, we see the things that happen. We see the turmoil that people end up in, right? And you generally don't see J. Cole's name in these dramas. You don't see him caught up in a lot of this nonsense. For a guy who is as talented as he is, for a guy that makes the level of music that he makes, you don't see him tied up with all the the, the BS, the TMZs and all that. I think the nigga was hooping at one point in time. Like, um, So why would he want to get himself involved with this now, especially at the age of 39? Uh, as a man gets older, he's not looking for more aggression. He's not looking for more drama. He's not looking for more beef, right? He said he's been sleeping good the last 10 years, right? Since 29, 30. He realizes what that meant. And that didn't sit right with his soul. A lot of people out there doing things that they know that don't sit right with their soul. You do it every day. And you go to bed thinking about the bullshit that you've done, right? Because you don't have the integrity or because of the crowd that you associate with or the people you keep in your circle, they would say something about it if you didn't move a certain way or act a certain way. So a lot of you people don't have the integrity to stand on your own tent and are complaining and calling J. Cole a punk or saying he got punked out. Absolutely did not. Did not. If you think that J. Cole doesn't have the capability to go bar for bar, my person, I believe, better bar for bar with um, Kendrick Lamar, you're crazy. Third party guy, of course not. We know, we know that's not the case. But I want to know your opinion. I want to know your thoughts. You can say I'm totally wrong and that's fine. If you agree, let me know what you think. If you disagree, let me know what you think. And who do you think, or who were you thinking would have been had Kendrick Lamar, I mean, sorry, had uh, Jermaine Cole, <laughs> J. Cole, really wanted to have the beef? Who do you think would have been the better, who would have had the better outcome, right? And then they also, you got to look at it too. And this is just a side note because I don't think these are two guys, maybe depending, uh, who would get into a situation like that. But think about all the greats that we've lost from stupid shit like rap beef, right? Shit getting escalated, shit going too far. And so before it ever gets to a point to go that far, before it ever gets to a point where, you know, and mostly it don't, but we see stupid shit happen all the time. Before it ever gets to a point to go that far, you see he just, he dens it. Why? What is that point? What What is the purpose? What is the drama like? That's that's female shit. And I get it. And I'm not saying, look, I don't like my a good rap beef, but if a person is living a certain way, it does not make sense for them to alter their character to participate in something that doesn't serve them. Now, if you're a nigga that's full of drama, you're a gangster rapper, you're doing all that, you're talking shit. Yeah, that makes, that makes plenty of sense. Super suitable. But anyway, who do you think would have won the beef? Do you think that J. Cole was a punk for apologizing? Or do you think that J. Cole actually made the right decision by apologizing? I'd definitely like to know what you think. Make sure you're following all the proper social media platforms, Dem Show Live, Instagram, X, TikTok. Make sure you're following. Go to thedemshow.com. It'll bring you to the channel. Uh, make sure you're following on <laughs> Ed Honcho HDX on Instagram and X Honcho HDX on TikTok. And if you made it this far through the video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And again, we go live pretty much every evening at 9, occasionally during the day at some point between 12 p.m. or 2 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Central in the evenings. If you want to catch the live, come join the Den Folk and be a part of the conversation. So with that being said, again, it is your boy at Hancho. It has been my honor, my privilege, and my pleasure to have this conversation with you. So I thank you for watching. And uh, I'm out.